Have you guys ever edited your footage before and you have a really cool composition, but it's a locked off static shot and it's just missing something? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to take your static shots and make them look way more dynamic, no matter if you're editing in DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, or Adobe Premiere Pro, these principles apply to all these editing programs with a couple quick tips and tricks that are gonna make your shots go from looking average to looking way more high-end and professional, making your productions look way better. Coming up. Yo, what's up content creators? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jason Anthony. I'm a full-time content creator. On this channel, I like to teach you guys how to step up your content creating skills. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And for those of you that already subscribe, hit that bell notifications, put those on so that every time I drop a video, you guys are alerted and you could stay up to date with all of my content that I'm dropping. So for today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys a simple principle that I like to use. And the more you get better and practice it, the more you can apply it to different effects. We're talking about keyframing and specifically the Gaussian blur effect. For this effect, we're gonna make it look like we were racking focus and adding a little bit of movement to our footage, our clip, to make it look from going pretty boring to making it look a lot more dynamic. And the more dynamic your films look, the more movement and focus pulling and just overall effects that aren't overdone but look like you did it in camera, it's gonna make your production level look way higher than it really is. So the more you use keyframing and adding different effects with it, you could really combine some really cool effects and one I've been messing with is a rack focus now we're not gonna go from one subject to another but we're gonna go from a complete blur slowly pulling focus into our subject and then just to spice it up a little bit I'm gonna add a little bit of movement so let's waste no more time I'm diving into Adobe Premiere but any of you guys editing on Final Cut Pro on DaVinci Resolve, as long as you know how to find this effect, which is the Gaussian blur effect, and how to do keyframing, which is super simple, this applies to any of these editing softwares. So let's dive into it. All right, guys, so we're in Adobe Premiere. We have the clip that I wanna show you this example with here with a boxer hitting the speed bag. He's a professional boxer that I filmed recently, and it's a cool shot. He's hitting the speed bag, the sound effect sounds dope, like it looks really cool, very cinematic with the tight headshot, but it's just missing something. So what we could do is click on this right here and get an adjustment layer open. We could drag the adjustment layer on top and I've already graded this Hybrid Log Gamma 3 clip. So if I take that and turn it on, there is my color grade. Looks pretty damn good to me if you ask. And if you wonder how I did it, click on the video that's popping up after this one on the top of the screen. And I'll show you the exact settings and how I grade Hybrid Log Gamma 3. Super easy. Now getting back to the effect that I want to talk about, what we're going to do is click on effects and you guys are going to start typing in Gaussian Blur. Now, I know Final Cut Pro and obviously Adobe Premiere have it. I'm not sure about DaVinci. I'm 99% sure you have that effect in DaVinci Resolve. And we're gonna drag it on top of our adjustment layer. So what we wanna do is add a simple keyframing effect so that this can ease in or ease out. We're gonna ease out of this effect right now. So all we have to do is click on the stopwatch. Now we have a marker right here and we're gonna crank up that blur. We can pick any amount of blur that we want. And when it comes to editing, color grading, anything like that, it's all up to you as the creator. So do whatever your little heart is happy doing, no matter what. Then all we have to do is drag this playhead a little bit out, and then we're gonna turn it off. We're gonna go back to zero, dropping another keyframe. And if we start from the beginning of our clip, it goes from blurry, and it looks like we're pulling focus. And if depending on how far out or how tight it is, it will change the speed that we're going from. So we're super blurry, boom, right into focus, or we could drag it out and play it back. And now it's slowly coming into focus, but obviously we want him in focus for most of the clip. So I would go right in the middle and it would look really cool. 
And there we go. That is the first part of this tutorial. So now that we have this going on, let's play with some more keyframing. Why don't we go click on our main clip? We drop a keyframe right here. So we'll turn this one off. We'll put it on and let's zoom in. Let's zoom in to like 150. And let's move it to the left a little bit or a lot of it depends on how you're feeling. Now, if we drag this out and then we hit the return for both of them, now we're recentering. If we play this back, this shot's looking so much more dynamic just with some keyframing and keyframing some effects. It's that easy. And then we could even drag this out to the end of the clip and play it back. And now we have some movement, zooming and panning and going from a rack focus effect or a pulling focus effect. I think this shot looks way more dynamic just by playing around with some keyframing and some effects, guys. Super easy to do. And I know this will make your films look a lot better. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tip. All right, so that wraps up today's video. And I hope I was able to give you guys some awareness on how powerful using keyframing techniques truly are to your films. By adding a simple effect like Gaussian blur or a scale, you can add more dynamics to your shots overall making your production level looking way higher and your clients having their, you know, mind blown wondering how the hell you were able to do that. If you guys thought this video was helpful, please leave a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. We're really close to 10,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without all of your support. In the comments below, let me know what editing software you guys are editing on and why. I've been possibly thinking of making the switch to Final Cut. Not sure if I'm going to because I'm so heavily invested in the Adobe suite, but it's something that keeps crossing my mind just for the rendering times and some really cool features. So if you guys are interested in me doing Final Cut tutorials, let me know in the comments below. I'm Jason Anthony, guys. Have a good night. Peace.